Hello. So we tried an attempt at going live on my Facebook business page and that didn't quite go so well. I think it was buffering a lot. But uh, hopefully it will be better if I go directly live on my page and on YouTube like I usually do. So that's how the current plan is. I'm just notifying people on my Patreon page to let them know that I'm live right now. And there we go. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully this will better now. Let's see the screen. So yeah, um, I'm working on mugs. You can see the whole pile of mugs behind me. They all need bottoms attached to them. Uh, if you were watching me day before, I told you I had to do these yesterday. As you can see, they were not done yesterday because the slabs I rolled out for the bottoms were just way too wet. I kept waiting for them to dry up, but they didn't dry up fast enough. So I couldn't do them yesterday. I thought I would do them late last night, but they were still a little on the wet side. So, I have to wait. I cannot rush things in today. Because all they land up with is a bunch of crap pots. Like my phone knows that I am live. So that's good. I'm running out of cornstarch. So I need to fix that as well. How is everyone doing today? Today was a Wednesday. I have to keep track of these. They all kind of muddled into one another. And it's been a year of this, right? Thank you to all the Patreon supporters for making these live streams possible and giving me company while I work in the studio. And also to everyone else who joins in, chats along and helps making this process a lot more fun. So there's two down, forty to go. So I'm gonna be here for a while, looks like because these mugs need to be completed. These bottoms need to be attached today. And I'm hoping that tonight I can attach the buttons on them and uh, at least make the handles tonight. I won't be able to attach the handles uh, today because um, the mugs need to stiffen up just a little bit more. And the handles, of course, need to be stiffened up a little bit further. But I do want to make the handles today, but not attach them. Uh, they need to then rest for a while and then I'll attach the handles tomorrow. But today's goal is to attach these bottoms on the mugs and then 
to the button selector one. Of course, I do have my knitting and spinning things that I need to do today as well because, you know, that's just fun to do. If you are getting fully trained watching my videos, making vlogs. After I'm done with this board of uh, mugs, I'm going to add some cornstarch to my little bag. And I have this love hate relationship with cornstarch because I do need it uh, so that the clay doesn't stick too much to my banding wheel um, the hate relationship I have with it is that it is dusty yeah. it's not as dusty as clay dust and not as harmful as clay dust but it's kind of like you know that whole bakery feeling where you have just flour just in the air all the time that's what I sometimes feel and because I cannot distinguish whether it's clay dust or cornstarch dust, it just, ugh, I don't like the feeling of it. But it is something I need. The other thing I don't particularly like about it is that it has to be just the right amount. If it's too much, then the clay pieces will not stick together which is not fun but if it's too little then they will stick to things that you don't want them to stick to so, it is a challenging situation but we make it work i haven't found a substitute better than cornstarch for those kinds of things Any other potters watching? Hi, Susan. Is <laughs> it porn stars? <laughs> well, that's one way to catch your attention. <laughs> Finally, somebody started chatting. <laughs> Maybe I should just throw in words like that every time. <laughs> no, I'm saying corn starch now did the closed captioning say it right oh god i wonder what that entire sentence looked like love hate relationship with porn stars that's what it meant right that's what it came out as oh god 
Hey, welcome to having an Indian accent. You get entertained. <laughs> I might have to go back. I, I think once the live video ends, I can probably go back and watch the video, but I'll have to rewind and try to capture this moment with the subtitles. Oh, it would be hilarious if that's what it translated to. Oh, thank you. This is, uh, this is not my lang seal, which I usually wear. Uh, this is the, it's a free pattern. It's called the uh, Violet Waffle Hat. Uh, and uh, it's knit in DK weight yarn. Uh, the yarn that I have, uh, I knitted out from is, um, I believe it's from Island Woods here in San Juan. San Juan or Woodby Island, somewhere there. Uh, it's a Yak, Merino and Silk blend. Very soft, very delicious to knit with. And of course, it has, uh, I think it was called the color wavers like pumpkin or something. I, I love orange ball colors, so I just gave in the minute I saw this. I was like, yep, yeah, that's going home with me. And I think I was at a trade show in Bellingham where they were there as well. And I was just staring at this skein of yarn in front of me for the whole evening. And every time somebody would get close to it, I would be like, okay, I just need to buy it before I regret it that somebody else did. So I just picked it up. I'm like, no, that's fine. Coming home with me. It's a, it's a nice, rich orange color. It's not like just bright orange. It's, a, it's like a, a little rustic orange, which I like. And the pattern is a really fun pattern to knit. It's uh, easy to memorize. It's uh, it's a four row repeat, but again, it's just knit simple. So you kind of you know when you're knitting, you can go like oh this, just this set of four rows and just this set of four rows, and the next thing you know it's done. And um, I knit this last year. The pattern was recommended by my friend Nancy from Schmutzarella Yarn. She's knit this pattern several times and even with hand spun yarn and she likes it a lot. Yes, those are mugs. Those are big uh, 20 ounce mugs. This is this is a regular 16 ounce mug, which I think is an appropriate coffee size, but people do like the big 20 ounce mugs. So, and, and they do shrink a little bit, so they ultimately after firing, this is this is what their size would be. Those big ones out there. So this one is a little small, but they do shrink. But you know, overall, just by like thirteen percent is my clay shrinkage. Is what it is. I have done it uh, several times to know how much. My clay shrinkages so that if I need to design a mug with a certain size and shape and everything, I know exactly what size template I need to use to get that. It's like making clothes, you know. You, if you know, that was the wrong size piece because this is a smaller mug. You're going like, why is that base looking so much bigger? It's a very slight difference in the size of the base. Like by just one eighth of an inch, and that makes a difference as to whether the base will sit nicely. It's 
So this is just slightly smaller and it will reach just the edge of the mug and a bit more. So I, I want the base to jut out just by like one eighth of an inch from, from the mug size. And uh, what I do is I clean up that extra which also makes a seal to the mug with my tool here. So that gives a nice fine edge to it and gives it a finished look plus it seals the bottom of the mug really well. And of course I have to seal it on the inside too because you don't want a scratchy edge on the inside which will catch your coffee and not get cleaned well. So it needs to be nice and smooth there as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and you also want it like a rounded edge. You don't want a sharp thing poking out because if it is a sharp edge like that there are more prone chances of it getting chipping. Uh, of it getting chipped so you don't want that to happen so that's why you round it off and i don't know if you can see this but that's the way it looks so it's nice and finished so that's all the process involved in getting that tiny base on max Okay, it's the knitters and spinners uh, who like that really big, big, big 16 ounce mug. I mean, 20 ounce mug. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of coffee. And these mugs, when they are finished, the ones which I say are 16 ounces, they're 16 ounces to the brim. So they hold probably a little less than 16 ounces. And I've gotten one person who has come back to me and saying that no, they really definitely need 16 ounces or more. So I'm like, then you need to get the 20 ounce mug. And they're much happier with that. size mug do you like to drink your morning coffee with from or tea or beer like the other thing those with really big mugs are good for is having beer or iced tea i like to have iced tea and then during the summer i can brew a tea in that mug itself and then just put ice cubes in it and i'm done how many mugs am i making today i have 42 42, yeah, 42 mugs. That means your base is attached. Those are all the mugs you can see in the background. There are seven mugs on every board. There are six boards total. That is the 42. So that is what the goal is. And then later today, I'm hoping to attach the buttons to them as well. And also make handles today i won't be attaching handles today for sure there's no time for it plus the handles will be too wet to go on and the mugs also need to stiffen up a little bit further for the handles to be a nice clean join but i will make the handles and let them rest till tomorrow so that is today's goal plus all the knitting and spinning i have not that I have to do, but I really want to do. 
and that's what my thing was today i said okay go ahead and do this now so that later i can go ahead and click and spin and do all the other fun things i like to do so this is another 20 ounce note so that's it does look extra big and i can show you in comparison that after shrinking that's what it says so it shrinks by that much so it's not going to be this size once it's finished can it almost goes down by almost i would say three quarter of an inch but yeah we have to make it bigger there is casper casper is probably giving my wife Rima company because ever since uh, the pandemic has started he has not been very excited about joining me in the studio because he has another person he can go to like before when Rima went to work he would just come and hang out out here in the studio there his dog bed is there I don't know if you can see that least this is probably hiding it but you see that red towel there that's where his dog bed is and that's where he used to nap the whole day while i was working but ever since rima is at home you know like i just hang out with her upstairs where there's no clay dust and i'm not making all these sounds which really annoy him it's like it's nice peaceful and quiet up there all you can hear is the keyboard typing, which is a lot more soothing than me hitting clay and hitting my mugs. And like he always gets started. He's so sound sensitive. So, and you can also see in my background my battery station, which is right there. That's above Casper's bed. I do need to dye some yarn uh, and I'm hoping I'm not quite sure but I do need to yes that's the steamer I use for dyeing fiber and mostly fiber I, I rarely dye yarn but i do need to dye some yarn because um, one the crochet blanket that i was finishing up uh i did finishing uh, i did finish uh crocheting all the granny squares and the triangles which go on the side in order to make it a proper square but i've run out of that border yarn which was a commercial regia yarn that I had purchased. Um, I don't have any of it in stock and I had no idea how much yarn crochet eats up. And it's not even like a huge blanket. It's like a lap size blanket, fingering weight yarn, soft yarn, uh, regia. And I have, for the border, I landed up using like four skeins, 100 gram skeins, just for the border of all those crochet squares and I thought that would be enough to do all those borders and run a border along the whole edge of the blanket but no I I had like six inches of yarn left after I finished my very last granny square so I have to dye some yarn for the entire border and I might not be able to get the <coughs> exact color match um, but I think I can get close enough. So, yeah, so that's what I'll be, <coughs> so that's what I'll be dying next. Um, and it's, a um, it's like a lime green, yellow color. It's mostly like yellow with a little bit of lime green kind of added to it. It's going to be bright and cheerful. So I know I have that and uh, regarding fiber, I kind of want to, I'm spinning up some stuff right now. So there are no dying goals as such for fiber, 
but I recently did get some fluorescent yellow and fluorescent orange dye which I kind of want to use in something. I don't know exactly what I want to dye with. Do I want to dye locks like that? Which I think would be cool. Or do I want to dye some, um, you know, talk and spin it like that? Or do I want to dye some talk for making bats? I'm, I'm not very sure, but I kind of know that if I dye fiber next, I kind of want to play with those colors a little bit. Uh, I did dye some samples with it, and that stuff is so bright, it's like, it can hurt your eyes. But it looks super cool. So, or I might, you know, start with those and kind of um, add some opposite colors from the color view and uh, try to like calm them down just a little bit. I don't know if it will work. I, I think it will. It's just that whether I like it exactly. Like I know if I added purple or something to that orange, it would just brown it out. But I want to add just a little bit so that it doesn't hurt your eyes orange. So, and I think maybe my hope is that it turns into like this rustic orange, which it's a rustic orange color that I really like. I'm hoping I can kind of get there if I try something like that. Yeah, dyeing fiber and yarn and then the whole thing where I do have some uh, gray colored roving which is some really beautiful beautiful roving uh, merino alpaca and uh, angora mix it's it's really nice very soft so uh, apparently I was disconnected from OBS but looks like I'm connected again so I have that which I don't feel like mixing into anything because it's my precious uh, but I do have uh, I do have some alpaca and merino I, I don't think it's merino it's alpaca and some wool that's uh, brown in color which I think would be a nice way to uh, you know tone down that orange but I think that's the other thing I'm really wondering whether I want to blend it like you know change that color of the orange by adding a dye or do I want to tone it down by you know drum carding it with a gray or a brown to tone it down and I'm kind of liking the idea of uh, toning it down by blending rather than uh, just using dyes because that kind of you know gives a lot more interest and uh, complexity to the yarn so that's what i'm hoping for So yeah, I uh, so I guess you're also thinking if I have some brown fiber, I could dye that brown fiber with like this bright safety orange, right? And I think that would be really cool as well, uh, because the white really like hurts your eyes white. But like I said, the roving that I have, especially the gray uh, roving that I have, which is the uh, merino alpaca and angora mix it is so soft and so beautifully prepped that I don't want to uh, do anything much to it so yeah brights are fun for locks or silk yeah for added bags that's what I thought I said like if I want to dye something I'll probably do it in locks I do have some uh, mohair as well which I think will look really nice and shiny and then I can spin some boucle yarn which I think it's the cover of uh, ply magazine uh, their boucle edition 
I think it's on their cover or it's in the magazine where they have this really amazing orange boucle yarn like in super close up. I think it's the cover. And it is, every time I see that picture, I go like, I want to make that orange. Yeah, mohair dyes really well too. So. And it's so good for making boucle yarn. So that's what I'm hoping I can do. And then uh, silk also dyes so well. Silk, it's like that shine you get from it is just stunning. But I do have quite a bit of silk already, like silk top already dyed up in nice bright colors. So I just don't want to add more orange and more yellow when I already have enough of it. Uh, I think I will go for maybe dyeing some more hair. More hair or locks. Uh, I do have some tease water locks, which I think will be a nice. A bright addition into bats or add-ins for some art yarns. I might do that. Okay, bright orange locks. I I did spin up uh, one of uh, Homestead Hobbyist fiber blends. Uh, it was the last uh, yarn I had posted on my Facebook page. The the stacks. So, so the dark purplish blue uh, yarn, which was the base of it, and it had these bright yellow stacks in it, right? So, but that base yarn, I still have some singles from that. Uh, maybe for another, a little more than an ounce of singles already ready. I'm thinking of chain plying that and adding uh, locks in between. I think will be a fun thing and I can uh, so that I think with some really bright orange locks would look really cool I think I think I might already have some bright orange locks yeah I do already have some which I had dyed with some other orange not this fluorescent orange but it's still a pretty bright orange I think it will look good with that I need to go back to my bin of stuff and start going through with it and see what's there. Hello Nizari Bea. I'm so bad with names. We have Nizar uh, joining in from Twitch. So hello there. From Mexico. Wonderful. I wonder what time is it in Mexico? But are you on the same time line? Well, I guess we're in Mexico, right? It's 2 p.m. Yeah, it's noon out here, so you're two hours ahead of us. Kind of like our, uh, what's it, central time? My parents live in Dallas, so it's 2 p.m. there. And they are, well, Dallas is not close, close to Mexico, but it is, you know, Texas is. So I imagine it would be the same time as that. That's cool. So what do you do? Do you work with clay as well? Or are you a fiber person? Or how did you stumble upon my channel? I'm just curious. I'm also live on Facebook and YouTube uh, at the same time, so I'm getting comments from there as well. So don't be surprised if I'm chatting to people who you cannot see the chat of. So this was, now this is Twitch correspondence. So people on Facebook and YouTube who are watching need not get confused. So this mug that I'm making, you probably cannot uh, see the close-up texture of it. I will show that to you. So that's the fine knit patterns. That's what that is. 
so you have never worked with clay but you would love to do it someday and you got your channel recommendation by twitch oh thank you i'm glad you like the pattern it's uh one of my most uh, it was my newest pattern which i introduced early this year so this is the fine knit pattern and i do the big big stitch pattern as well so that's the really big stitches so it's not so fine uh, but that is a very popular pattern of mine and the other popular pattern of mine is the lace so that is lace knitting yeah they all look like sweaters and they all get buttons and a lot of other fun things added on to them lots of colors Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. And feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, I hand build these from slabs of clay. And uh, you can see finished pieces uh, of my work on my website. The link is down below here. Creativeclay.com. So you can go there and you can see the glazes and colors once they get glazed, how they look. all inspired by my love for fabrics whether it's embroidery patterns from india or whether it's knitted patterns and spinning patterns or weaving patterns everything fiber related well nice to see you susan see you next time thank you for the company and i will see you soon again. i still have a lot of notes to do so i'll be here for a while well thank you i'm glad you find me very lovely and, and hope you uh, get entertained by my channel and keep watching there is uh, i keep going live doing clay work and uh, fiber work spinning lots of spinning lots of knitting weaving so whatever i do I just go live it. There is no agenda. I don't have a fixed schedule. So I'm sorry about that. People are very disciplined about going live at certain times of the day and everything. I cannot work like that. I, I like to work when I like to work. And uh, I'm good to be on schedule for stuff. I don't like, uh, you know, I'll meet deadlines and everything. But Clay is kind of like the way that if I plan that I need to do it today, I just can't do it. Like if the clay is too wet, I cannot do anything. I just have to wait till it dries. I cannot rush that drying process. The more I rush to make the piece, I might end up losing the piece. So I'm, it's much better and safer for me to just stay patient and wait when the clay is ready. It just makes my life easier and also the claims. It's, it's a win-win situation. So, hence you will not find me live. Every Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. No, that's not happening at my end. I tried. I did try. Beginning, I, could, I, think, I think the middle of last year, when I started doing more live events i thought maybe that's the way to be on schedule so it, i felt like i was working in a in a job job like i had to get ready by 10 o'clock my live is on and all of that i was like no this is it's not fun if it's not fun then there's no point doing it and then it would be like i was on schedule everything and i would be ready ready to work in the studio and then i couldn't do it Yes, the mugs, bowls, all of them, they can uh, go in. Oh, you mean to dry them up? Uh, the thing is, if you try to rush the drying by putting them in an oven or anything like with high heat, they will dry too quickly and they will tend to crack. Uh, 
the way I make my pieces because they are hand built and they are not thrown on the wheel. I can't just put them out in the sun or something like that to dry them up quickly because you know they are hand built from slabs and there is a seam that runs in the mug and then I decorate it with a handle and buttons and all of that. It needs to dry slowly. Uh, if you add too much heat or uneven heat then they'll tend to twist and turn and that seam can come apart and the base which I'm attaching right now that can come apart so there's a lot more to it than just uh, you know oh stick it in the oven and dry it it doesn't work that way but once they are fired and they are you know glazed and completely ready finished pieces they are all dishwasher microwave safe and everything so yeah the thing with clay is that you can't just uh, like it depends if you are if you're throwing on the wheel and there are certain pieces like if I'm doing bowls right I can I can throw them on the wheel and then I can actually take them out in the Sun and it's usually fine because there's a lot of nice memory which goes into the clay particles when they are spinning on the wheel and uh, that keeps their nice round shape the clay has a lot of memory to remain round and if it is even heat all throughout it's good but i still don't like to do it because it can happen that the rim of the bowl will dry too quickly than the base and that can result in cracking so the safest thing is usually to dry slowly so that's what I try to do. Okay, let's see if this is a voicemail that I actually want to hear. I get so many. Uh, okay, but I don't need to hear that. Let me just start my phone. It has no power in it. And if you are learning, uh, you know, hand building is a good thing to get started with. You don't need a lot of expensive tools to start learning to hand build. You can just start with a rolling pin, some clay and some basic tools which you can probably just find in your kitchen. And uh, like I have these fancy banding wheels and stuff like that because I do this in production like I'm doing. 40, 42 months today, so I like to make things easier for me, but uh, you can slowly add on tools as you feel the need. Uh, if you want to learn throwing on the wheel, it does require the investment of the wheel. So that can be something which, you know, and you need this much more space because you do land up making uh, a lot more of a mess uh, how long I've been doing pottery I have been I started in 2000 so it's been 20 years 21 years well I'll finish 21 years in August I remember when I first started making pots but actually in December in November October November of this year I'll finish 21 years of making pottery. But that is from my very first clay class, right? When I fell in love with the medium and all of that. Uh, I started selling my work uh, in 2004, I believe. Yeah. No, not 2004. 2002. No, 2003. So <laughs> that's your whole life and see there is so much more of your life left ahead and I was uh, you know my background uh, I was studying in IT and doing software programming that's what my real job was 
and I was I discovered pottery and I was just doing it on the side and then it just kept getting serious and more serious and I was doing more and more of it and doing more shows so I'm finally now doing it full time since when did I quit? 2011 is when I quit my job and I've been doing this since so it's never too late as your whole life it's it's like you're probably 20 years old or something you have so much time right like i started doing pottery when i was in my late 20s that's when i started so it's never too late i i don't think i'll call myself an expert i there is uh, like almost with any field right there are just so many different things you can do uh I feel I'm good at what I'm doing because I've done it for so long and um, you know I have created a process for the way I want my mugs to be and I can make them the way I want them to be but even with clay there are always challenges like every time I want to do a different pattern uh, it's hard for me to put it you know figure out how to do it on clay. Oh, you do embroidery and you love to do it for a living but art is not well paid here yeah it's the case even back in india right so i'm originally from india and uh, when i was there the reason why i did the engineering and then the computer science and then the, the software programming is because of pressure from family and oh, who, who can make a living out of selling art and yeah, there is, uh, it's not everywhere that art is appreciated. Uh, but, I, you know, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. It doesn't pay, like, even now, this it doesn't pay, pay like my software programming job. But it is, uh, it's much better for my mental health, for sure. That job was just so stressful and even with this right if it's your work it does get a lot uh, you know there is stress involved with this there is work things like what this pandemic year has taught us like oh there are no shows and all that stuff like how are you going to sell your stuff but if you're really passionate about it you figure out a way to do it but if, like, at that, sometimes, you know, in those times I thought, oh, it would be good if I was still doing the software programming because I could just work from home and not have this issue of, oh, how am I going to get to a show and how where the customers are going to be there and all that stuff. But the stress involved with that was so bad. I'm like, no, I'm going to go for that. So, figure a way out. That's what we try. That is 14 months done, and I have a total of 42 months to be completed. That's an insane amount of months. But it has to be done today. I'm repeating that again and again so that I don't procrastinate about it. Yes, there are. There are total, like I usually work in groups of 50, 50 months at a time. Uh, these are slightly fewer than 50 months because I have some of those big jumbo mugs. So when I have those big jumbo mugs, then, you know, they, I make a, a little less. Because of the way they all fit in the kiln. Uh, that's the other thing, you know, uh, regarding clay as a hobby, the, uh, the big investment you need is a kiln to fire everything. There are some uh, other firing techniques like pit firing, which uh, you might be familiar with in Mexico. I think it is popular there where you basically fire them in the ground with heat. But uh, the long, you know, they are not 
functional kind of like you know how people out here in the u.s like to use their pottery like dishwasher microwave and stuff like that uh, those pieces that don't land up being that strong for those purposes so having a kiln is important to fire your work so since you do like embroidery uh, you might enjoy seeing some of my pots on my website uh, which are all inspired by embroidery patterns you have never seen a dishwasher in your life it's like we, we people in the u.s are just too much spoiled with these things and you know it sounds like such a convenience right and this is like totally a first world problem right where even loading and dish loading and unloading and dishwasher is sometimes seen as such a chore that oh i don't want to do it like it's sheer laziness like in india i never had a dishwasher and we wash dishes just fine but again you there was there's a culture of you know having uh people come to your home your help coming in and doing the dishes cleaning the floor and all that stuff so it was fine but here it's like i have to do the dishes i have to put them in the dishwasher and then remove them yeah no point complaining with that stuff you got your own dishwasher i think there are many people in the us too right because when I go to shows, I, out here, I do assume that everyone or most people do have dishwashers. So when they come to purchase my pottery, I do let them know that, you know, they are dishwasher safe and they're microwave safe. And I would say at least 25% of the people uh, let me know that they don't have a dishwasher and they just do all their dishes by hand. Uh, because they're like, yeah. Never had a dishwasher, never needed one. Which is which is good. You don't need to be relying on all the things. But then you know it it is a convenience too. I won't lie. I'm I'm glad I have a dishwasher. I'm glad I can just stick things in there and shut it in, in the night and then in the morning everything is clean. It it is really good for that. And we are just a family of two and a dog, so it's not like we have a huge family, but bigger families with kids and all, I can see why a dishwasher would be really helpful. But even big families, not everyone has dishwashers. You just teach your kids to do your own dishes. It's fine. After I'm done doing this bowl, I will be at least halfway through. After which I think I will take a break and have some lunch and then come back. How many more mugs I have? I have another six more mugs including this one. And then I get to take a little break. Some big restaurants do have dishwashers, but still it's not that common. Yeah, and uh and then again, you know, dishwashers are also kind of a relative thing. Like I have seen some restaurants out here have like dishwashers, which is like an assembly line where things go in a cart thing and then they go through this machine where they get washed and they come out from the other end all clean and dry. And the thing because those are big scale restaurants. Um, but there are also restaurants where it is kind of like they have a person there who's washing all the dishes but that's even here and then the other thing is like fast food places they're just so big on disposable stuff right so they don't even care about dishwashers because everything just gets thrown in the trash i guess 
but that's serving dishes. I guess they would be having stuff back there which they wash, but I hope they do. It is a little worrisome as to how things happen behind the doors in restaurants and kitchens and stuff. You know. I have a family who has worked in that environment. Uh, one of my nephews is a very popular chef in India and uh, he has how many? Did he cross? Did he cross hundred million followers or something? He's he's really big with his cooking and his recipes and all of that. So really proud of him. His uh, channel is uh, Your Food Lab, and really good Indian recipes and very it, it's like food porn, good stuff. Like, you know. <laughs> well, thank you for joining in. It was nice meeting you, and I hope I have uh, inspired you to play around with clay and stuff. And yeah, come on, follow me, turn on notifications so you know that I'm going live, and see you next time. Five more months and then I'm going to take my break as well. Some fun. I hope I have it. I'm stuck now. Next one. God, these tools are so sharp and everything when I get them, but they really do break them out. And this is almost getting close to this detail. Oh, there's still some life left in it.
four more months and then I get to have lunch. I get to treat myself with lunch. <laughs> That's one incentive to work, right? Another hour to do the remaining, but those are smaller marks. The bigger marks take a little bit longer. These marks will be faster. I think I could get them done in less than an hour. The remaining half, we shall see. This is a special order mark, smaller size one. waterfall in the background that's when somebody uses the bathroom upstairs it does have an insulation thing and there was a door in front of this cupboard behind me but that's been transformed into a a spray booth so it provides additional sound effects. Hey Christine, you're in Zoom school right now. <laughs> I am going to do two more mugs and I'm going to sign off too from here because I need to have some lunch. And uh, then I will be back to do finish off the, the remaining 
21 months. So I'll be at least at my halfway point. So I'll be back in an hour's time or less because I really want to get these done. This caster. What is a caster? Oh my goodness, Casper, what is it? There must be somebody in our curl the side. It's as simple as that. Enough to get them excited. Last one, and then I take a break. So last one, and we're gonna have lunch, and then be back to finish off the remaining mugs. What probably is her because I do want them to stick a lot a little bit. On the top this side, so it can air out a little bit. Thank you everyone for joining in. I will see you all next time. Maybe in another hour. Alright, take care.